Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, thank you for joining our January National Webinar 2017 Business Plan for Realtors with our Virginia broker Tracy Brown. Allison James Estates and Homes is a nationwide brokerage which offers 100% commission and 100% support. Why split your commission if you don't need to? You earn it all, so shouldn't you keep it all? Our goal at Allison James is to always get back to our agents by providing education, training sessions, live webinars, live events, and full broker support with the most up-to-date tools and technology available. We are always looking for new tools and ways to be able to provide them to our agents at a lower or discounted price, so you can keep your hard-earned money for the important things in life and the people you love. With plans starting at just $35 per month, we have plans that cater to agents of all levels of production. As Allison James continues to grow, we will be providing more of these free tools to help you grow your business. Allison James Estates and Homes is ranked among Real Trends Top 30 Independent Brokers in America. We currently have over 1,100 agents and are growing every day. Thank you to all of the outside agents who have joined us today. We feel that training should be free and we welcome to you to join any of our upcoming webinars or live events. Today's webinar is sponsored by our preferred lender, Movement Mortgage. I would now like to introduce Shelly Hoysith, Senior Loan Officer with our preferred lender, Movement Mortgage. Good morning, Shelly. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone across the nation. Uh, I would just like to, you know, I don't want to take a lot of time and horn into um, Tracy's business plan um, webinar, but um, just on that theme, I would like to personally thank everyone um, from Allison James that did help support me and the team this year. We did help 60 families, and uh, according to our 2016 business plan, that was our goal. We hit it exactly on the dot. So I will just attest to having a business plan and having a goal, one that you monitor monthly, is really important for helping you get there because uh, all of a sudden you notice, shoot, if I can just get, you know, reach out to one or two more people, I can meet that goal. And um, we did hit it. So the goal for 2017 is 75 families. Um, you know, in the back of my mind, I think we, we might go a little bit uh, beyond that, but I think 75 is a pretty realistic goal that we can attain, and um, you know the way that we are are going to do that is through Movement Mortgage's 671 philosophy. That's our six-hour underwriting turn times, our seven-day processing goals, and one day to close once everything's been uh, processed and approved. So that has really helped us tremendously. You know, if you have a Movement Mortgage loan officer near you, or you want me to refer one to you let me know. Um, it really will help you when you don't have to worry about the transaction and knowing that your buyers have been pre-underwritten before they go out there will really help you. One thing that's funny, I'm dealing with one right now where the closing date is February 9th and uh, you know, loan docs went out, gosh, I think two weeks ago, <laughs> like a week and a half ago, and the escrow officer, I just got an email just now, and she said, well, my, she's been communicating with my funder, and she said, the problem is, I'm really confused because loan docs came over so early. So I just think that's kind of funny because I don't think that escrow officers are used to loan docs coming over early. Um, they're usually saying, where's docs, where's docs, where's docs? So um, that's just a little testament about how we work. And um, again, I just want to thank you for your support this year. And I look forward to meeting many more of you uh, in 2017 as we move forward. So on that note, I'm going to pass it back to Sheena so you can get on with uh, the main presentation. Thank you, Shelley. Um, if you would like more information about Alice and James Estates and Homes, please contact Alicia Aratari in our National Growth and Development Department at 941-941. 677-2544 or by email at joinus at ajicorporate.com. With that being said, I would now like to introduce Tracy Brown. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, everyone. It's exciting to be here talking with you today. Well, it's afternoon here. I'm on the East Coast, and I'm so I'm excited to be here. And thank everyone for tuning in today. I have some exciting information that I think can really, really help you going into here 2017 and um, I'm going to make some challenges for you today 2017 
the key word today is focus. Focus. Being able to focus going into 2017. Um, I have about 27 years in the real estate industry and um, came in the industry at a very young age. At about 21 years of age, I came into the industry. Humbly speaking, um, had some success in the industry. Um, I spent a lot of time learning presentations, scripts, going to seminars, all kinds of programs to be the best I could be in real estate. And at a very young age, I uh, had a lot of success. But my success, it doesn't mean anything. And my goal is not to impress you, but to impress upon you. If I can, you can. So let's get right to it. I don't even want to see how many people are on today because I want to give you an uncut version and my passion for making a difference and impact. Today, this is what you're going to learn. You're going to how, learn how to finish in 2016 strong. You've already finished, right? But did you take your numbers? Did you recap? Why and how to recap 2016 results? Have you done that yet? How can you get where you're going if you don't know where you're coming from? Hmm, think about that. How to set production goals. We're going to talk about that today. Personalized goals just for you, production goals. And this, last but not least, how to determine the numbers you need for your sales success. My friends, I hate to tell you this, Real estate sales, it's all about numbers. Mortgage sales, it's all about numbers. Being a salesperson alone, it's all about numbers. Are you aware if you ask enough people, eventually you get someone to say yes? Well, do you know how many people you need to get to the yes? That's what we learn. I'm going to share with you some information that I've learned, and I've taught this information over the years. I've taught tons of agents, and I've went to many workshops and things, and and I've learned these numbers all from all over North America, the top three principles for sales growth. And it doesn't change. In order to have sales growth in any type of business, but I'm dealing specifically with real estate now, concentrate 100% on the number of contacts made daily and the number of presentations made weekly. Why? Because the contacts made daily are going to lead to the presentations and your presentations get you closer to the sale. Listen to this third set, second. Concentrate 100% on the number of deals and not income. Why is it that? I taught agents that for years. This is the reason why. If you get into the real estate business, you begin to do extremely well. Let's say you set a goal to make $100,000 in real estate in 2017, right? What if you get this sale, a million dollar listing, and it sells, and you double end the listing at 6%, and you make $60,000, and that's your first sale for the year. Well, guess what? You're more than halfway finished. You're 60% complete already for the year to making your $100,000. Will you work harder to get to the 100000 quicker, or will you slow up? Chances are, you're going to take a vacation, you're going to slow up, and you're going to forget about the goal, and at the end of the road, you only make about 65000 that year. Why is it that? Because you concentrated on the money and not the number of deals. So my goal is to help you understand how important it is that set goals based on the number of deals. I want to do 60 deals or 75 deals this year as um, Sheila was talking about on the, earlier today. I think it was Sheila or Shelly. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. I think it's Shelly. Well, Look at what we're saying. So if your goal is 75 deals, what does it take for you to get there? The third principle for sales growth, do not under any circumstances sanction incompetence with self or the people around you. So often real estate agents, what we do, we want to base everything on those in our surrounding, what's happening to us around us. Well, I'm not that bad. Well, I'm doing at least this. Well, I'm getting coffee and donuts every morning. What's happening? And they're doing the same thing. Huh? Don't base your success on the agent next to you. Base your success on who you are and what you need. In order to do that, I share with you about the numbers. You have to be able to qualify leads and contacts. You see, I can't give you goals for 2017 without first giving you the basics and the definition. What is your definition of a lead or contact? What is your definition of a lead? When I was more into the day-to-day -day sales in the business, my definition of a lead was a buyer or seller 
who wanted to do business in 14 days or less. Why was it that? Then it got to the point where it was seven days or less, you had to want to do business or I will put you in a reticular file and talk to you later. Because I had to pre-qualify my lead so I could get instant business. What is yours? A lead is anyone who will buy or sell in how many days or less with you? If you're new in a business, it may be 120 days or less. Well, that's long-term business. You're not going to get it right away. So you have to be able to de specifically define what a lead means to you. If not, you'll get what we call lead-itis. What is lead-itis? Well, you have all these leads and contacts of people who want to do business with you, but they may say, I want to buy a house five years from now. Well, you may be out of the business five years from now if everyone wants to buy five years from now. So you have to pre-qualify your leads and contacts. Listen to this. What is your definition of a contact? Hmm. Is it a person who can just breathe? Should they have a job? Should they be at least 18 years of age? You have to make that decision. A person who can make a decision to buy or sell should be your definition of a contact. Now look where we are. Now we know what the definition of a lead is. A lead to me, 14 days or less. A lead to you may be someone who wants to buy or sell in 120 days or less. So we have different definitions. But I know our definition of a contact should be a person who can make a decision to buy or sell. If they're 15 years old and you call their house a prospect and they can't make a decision to buy or sell, they're not a contact at all. So listen to this. So we know what a lead is now. We know what a contact is. Oh, I love sharing this information. It gets exciting here. Now, top producers, this is the average top producers, producers data all over North America. The research has been done for years and years. The research has shown it takes 12 and a half contacts to equal one lead. Now, we said our lead is based on your definition, a person who wants to buy or sell in 120 days or less. I said mine was 14 days or less. Why? I had so many contacts. I had more than enough. I needed people now, not later. So listen to this. And every five leads equals one appointment. So if 12 and a half contacts equals one lead, now you're going to figure out soon where I'm going with this. And every five leads equals one appointment. Now two appointments equals one listing or sale. That means your closing ratio is 50%. That's not bad. They say, I'm saying if you get in front of a buyer seller who is a good lead and they're a strong contact who qualifies, you're going to close 50% of them. That's without even having any sales training or presentation training. You'll probably do pretty good with 50% of them. Listen to this. One listing or one sale equals one closing. Now, we're going to begin to take these numbers and make them personal for us, for our own personal goals that we're designing. Now you say, well, Tracy, I'm doing about 10 deals a year now. I want to add 25 deals. Well, this is what it takes. This is the research all over North America, the data and the average data and information in research. It takes 10 hours of prospecting per week. What is prospecting going to consist of for you? Is it doing follow-up work? Do you have a lead generating system on your website? Are, are you prospecting by calling on prior for sale bar owners, prior expired listings? Um, what are you doing? Then it said it takes 125 contacts per week. You know that you got to get 125 contacts per week of people who can buy or sell a house in order to be closer to your goals of doing 25 deals a year. Then it takes 10 leads generated per week. How are you going to generate those 10 leads per week? I don't. It doesn't matter how you generate those 10 leads per week. You know you need 10 leads generated per week somehow. When I was heavily active um, in the business of selling more and more and selling, I had a goal. Every day, I had to have at least 200 contacts or five leads before I would go home. If I didn't get the five leads, I had to have 200 contacts. I had to do that before I went home every day. And my friends, I did that six days a week. And I took Sunday off just to show properties, but I didn't call people. And I did mine through prospecting. That's what I did. And after about six months, I had more business than I could imagine to service. Now with technology, you don't even have to do all that anymore. 
There's so many systems you can use, but you have to invest the hours in managing and following up and monitoring the system today. Listen to this. It says two hours of lead follow-up per week equals about 30 minutes daily. You need to go on two listing appointments per week, and you need to have two closings per month, and you have how many deals? 25 deals a year. Now, with all those deals, those two deals per closing, what if it doesn't come in the first month you start prospecting? Well, you'll get what we call a domino effect. You may, if you keep working in the third month, you may have six deals. That's how it works. But you know, I tell agents to look at their prospecting and their investment in time like a, a well, like an old-fashioned well pump in the country. You have to pump and pump that well to get the water up to the top, right? Well, if you stop pumping, what happens to the water? It goes back to the bottom. And that's what happens to us so often. My friends, I've shared with you about defining what a lead is and a contact is. I also share with you at this point about understanding the numbers. It's extremely important to understand the numbers. Now let's talk about setting goals going into 2017. See, the goal is to assist you on getting deals in spite of the fight. What do I mean by that? Your biggest struggles is with yourself. You have to raise your expectations that you can do what it takes to be successful. And that's extremely important to do that. Now, I want to share with you some principles, eight principles here that will not be on the screen that top producers do. Let me share with you what they do. And if you want to increase your production, you may want to write this down. This is what the top agents do. They spend 80% of their emphasis daily on getting listings. Why more time on getting listings? Because if you get the listing, you can make more sales. It takes about two hours to do the average listening on a national average, and it takes about six hours of time, not at one time, working with the buyer to close. You can do more listings, you make more money, you can play golf on the weekend, or tennis, or whatever you like to do, and someone can be showing your property and closing on it, and you still get paid. So they spend 80% of their emphasis daily on getting listings. Number two, they take control of everything. What do I mean by that? You must take control of the buyers and sellers by having a presentation. Not physically take control of them, but mentally and emotionally, you have to manage their state of helping them get to what they want. I used to tell agents, you're not a real estate agent. You are a decision maker. You help people make decisions. Number three, they place high emphasis on delegation. Learning to delegate everything. If you work with Movement Mortgage, Movement Mortgage does the mortgage. Don't you get into that. You want to get your lender, a loan officer that you're comfortable with, who can work with, and they can help you meet the needs of your people, your buyers, your sellers, and you don't have to be involved. You want to delegate that. Number four, they place high emphasis on inexpensive and effective personal promotion. I'm going to give you a couple of tips of some inexpensive, effective personal promotion. We offer free campaigns at Allison James to help you do that. We have a website that's designed to give you free drip mail system. Um, drip mail is keeping in touch with people who've contacted you. It's an inexpensive personal promotion, promoting what you do. Give them information to be the expert in the industry. Social media with your social media group. That could be personal promotion, very inexpensive. And this is the best one, the biggest one and so many agents fail to do it. Are you ready for this? Calling your sphere of influence. Sphere of influence are the people around you that you know, that you have influence with, and they want to help you succeed. You tell them your goal, you be able to call them up and say, hey Bob, just touching bases with you again. Around about this time every month I give you a call. I'd just like to know, have you heard of anyone who's interested in buying and selling their house? I have some great information I'd like to share with them. No, Tracy, I don't know of anyone, but I'll listen around for you. Okay, Bob, I'll call you back next week, next month, about the same time to make sure everything is going good for you if you have any questions or if you know if I can help. Is that okay? That's fine, Tracy. Well, what happens after about six months of calling once a month of your sphere of influence? Well, you activate what they call a reticular activating system in their brain. Now, when they're at the next function or party and someone says, you know, I want to sell my house, guess what? I got the perfect person for you, Tracy Brown. I'll have him to give you a call. 
what has happened after you continue to call your sphere with a plan only once a month, you activate what they call the reticular activating system. Let me explain what that is. Okay, say this, you remember the time you bought your first car and let's say if it was a, I don't care what it was, it was a Honda, Toyota or whatever it may was, be, or whatever brand it was, you didn't notice all those Hondas or Toyotas on the road just like yours until you purchase one. Right, now you have a reference and your reticular activating system has been triggered to look for Toyotas just like yours. Same thing you do it with sales. Wow, that's powerful, your sphere of influence. Number five, they put all repetitive follow-up work in a computer and teach someone else how to do it. That's what top producers do. They don't spend all their time sitting at a desk, shuffling papers from place to place. See, I have to tell you this information here before I can help you plan your 2017 business goals. Number six, they concentrate 100% on the number of contacts made daily and the number of presentations made weekly. That's what top producers do. Number seven, they concentrate 100% on the number of deals and not income. We talked about that earlier as well. And number eight, I share this with you too. They do not under any circumstances sanction incompetence with self or the people around them. You have to keep that in mind. Those are eight steps that top producers always follow to become successful. My friends, I've shared some numbers with you in reference to leads and contacts. Now I'm going to break it down how to apply these numbers to yourself. I'm going to give you a scenario here, but you want to be able to plug your own numbers in this scenario. Let's go over this scenario right here now. It said, let's think about this. What is your total cost of living? Think about it right now. Just do an estimate. You may say, well, Tracy, my total cost of living is $5,000 per month. Well, I don't know what yours is. For this person, I just use a, a, a easy one to figure. I use $3,000 a month as the average total cost of living for this person. So then I ask you, what is your total outside income? Let's say your total outside income, you get a Social Security check, you get a retirement check, or you have a spouse who gives you money to make up the mortgage or whatever it may be. Let's say your total outside income is $1,000 a month. That's a difference of $2,000. So this is telling me you only need $2,000 per month to break even, to survive every month because you got the outside income coming in and we subtract the outside income from your total cost of living. So $2,000 a month. Trace, if I get $2,000 a month, I'm fine. I'm good. I can survive. Let's say your average commission was $2,000. I use this. Yours may be $20,000, $10,000. I use easy numbers so you can understand the concept of where I'm going. So if your average commission is $2,000, therefore to survive, you're saying, I must sell one home per month. I got quiet. Why did I get quiet? Because the average agent stay in survival mode, one home per month. Am I right or wrong? I know I'm right. If you look at the national average, most agents, 95% of agents stay in the survival mode. So let's say, okay, it takes one, one deal per month, this person here, and you say you, to be in survival mode. You say, well, Tracy, I don't want to be in survival mode. I want to be have a savings. I want to live a prosperous real estate career. So let's say you want to save $24,000 a year. Therefore, in order to save $24,000, I'm going to sell one additional house home per month for, guess what, for the year. So guess what that does for you is? If you sell 12 homes, that gives you what? That $2,000 commission, that's $24,000. That's right. So now, you in survival mode, that one house per year, are you with me? Excuse me, one house per month. And you in saving mode for an additional one house per month. So now we have 24 homes per year to have a savings and to kind of somewhat get out of survival mode. Let's say you want to be debt-free. Yes, debt-free. Let's say your total indebtedness is $48,000, and you can be pretty much in control. It may be besides your house payment, you know, your major mortgage, but debt-free, your credit card is $48,000. So to be, to be debt-free, guess what? $48,000 divided by that $2,000 average commission, that's 24 deals. 
So this person to be debt free, they need 24 additional deals. They need one deal per month to get out of survival mode, which was 12 deals. Savings, they need one deal, which is another 12 deals, which was what? 24 deals. And they need an additional 24 deals to be debt free. So what does that mean to us? Well, look at where we are here. 12 deals I just shared with you. Survival, 24 deals debt free. Saving 12 deals. Let's do an additional seven deals per year for vacation and play cash just to throw away. Yes, let's just do an additional seven. How many deals is that? You average those deals up. I shared with you how many deals it actually takes you to do 25 additional deals. You want to back your numbers of leads and contacts in those deals. And these are the three goal setting questions you have to ask yourself. Is my production at the survival mode? Think about your production right now. This is not rocket scientist, friends. Are you at the survival mode with your production? Ask yourself this, how many deals will it take to reach my goals? Have you factored that yet? I want you to spend time after this call to factor out how many deals it will take you in 2000, 2017 to reach a goal. And listen to this, do I understand the numbers to become a top producer? What numbers do you need to be a top producer? This is all based on you. It's not based on anyone else but you. Do you know the numbers you need? I want you to do that. How many homes must you sell for the year to have a balanced life? How many deals you need? Think about that. If you just kind of factor that in your head right quick, let's say you need 48, 50, 52. I don't know what it may be. Yours may be 12 deals. You may be part-time. I don't know. Think about the number of deals you need. Okay. Now take that and think about but your transaction goal for 2017, what would be your transaction goal for 2017? How many transactions you need to do? What would be your income goal? Just take an average of your income goal that you would need. And the question I'd like to ask you today, starting in January, are you on track, off track, or you have no clue? That's the key. We have to make sure that we're on track. See, in 2017, I want to share with you that your real estate production should be divided into six parts. I want you to write this down. The first part is, what must I do to start my 2017 production on the right track? Think about what you must do to do that. Next, you need to recap your previous year production. Why do you need to recap your previous year production? If your marketing that you did last year it's not getting the results you need, we need to do something different. How can you know where you're going if you don't know where it is you come from and where you're trying to go? You have to know these things. Number three, know your specific 2017 production goals. You gotta know your specific 2017 production goals. Number four, know the numbers required to achieve my goals. Do you know the number it takes to achieve your goals? Are you able to see how many leads and contacts you need per day, per week, per month to factor into your annual goal and your monthly goal? Do you know? Do you have, this is next here, do you have a daily schedule? What is your daily schedule of when you're going to work? My friends, I had a daily schedule, I have one today, what time I'm going to get up, what time I'm going to prospect, what time I'm going to do follow-up work, what time I'm going to do my administrative work, and what time I'm going to do my future marketing work. All this has to be in a perspective. That way you can have quality time, take off, and not even work weekends. And, oh, agents used to be so frustrated. They asked me, how are you able not to work weekends? I was taking listings and I did all my hall work during the week, so on the weekends I didn't have to work. And they were calling me to show my listings. I dare you can't be reached on the weekend. All agents work on weekends. Not true. Next, understand the challenges and solutions of your 2017 goal. Do you know the challenges that you may face of not having a schedule? What is your solution? The solution is, is developing a plan to develop a schedule that's going to help you stay on track. You need to start strong in 2017. I'm going to go over this again. I'm going to reiterate some of these things again. These are the things. This is what I want you to do this month. Don't wait till next month. 
identify how many days you will work in 2017. That's right. You want to take off to play. There's 365 days in a year. You want to take out holidays. You're going to take out days you know you're going to be off to go to graduations or whatever it may be. You're going to take those days off, right? Okay, let's account for those days you're going to take off. You may only work 180 days in a year, but work those 180 days and have a plan. No one plans to fail. They just fail to plan, I once heard a speaker say, and that's been with me for, for many years. No one plans to fail. They just fail to plan. I want you to write a detailed schedule, what you plan to do Monday through Friday, and you can take off a half a day on Saturday, not even work on Saturday if you start your prospecting properly. Listen to this. Identify how many listings you must sell. That's right. Identify how many listings you must sell in 2017. You can start it now. We're only in January. You can play catch up. Identify how many buyer sales needed. Do you know how many you need? Well, some are given. You know you're going to get some referral business. How many you need? Next, how many listing appointments must you go on? You remember when I talked about you, you have to go on two appointments to get one. So you have to determine based on your numbers and your goals and your leads and contacts where you need to be. Next here, how many hours of prospecting you need to reach your goal? I shared with you it took 10 hours of prospecting a week to add 25 deals. Some of you may not even do 10 hours of prospecting in a month. And you expect to reach your goal in 2017? Are you kidding me? Well, this is serious business, my friends. This is an activity plan for your goals. This is something I want you to understand. You have your income goals and your buyer sales goals. For your income goals, you want to know your closed deal goal, your listing appointment goal, your listings taking goal, and your listing sold goal. Buyer sales goals, you want goals hours per week you work, goals days work, prospecting goals, and your contact goals. These are the activity plan. On your daily schedule, you want to have your goals planned. I ask you to formulate what you're going to do daily to weekly to monthly. Well, you may have something that comes up on the third day, and you can't do anything that day. But at least you know how to get back on track on the fourth day. You have to have a plan. No one plans to fail. They just fail the plan. So in your activity plan, these are the items you must include in your goals. You must have these goals to be successful. There's no way around it. You have to have the plan to do it. Now, my friends, you need to have that calendar. You must have a daily schedule to achieve your 2017 goal. You must have business goals, stay on schedule to achieve that goal. You need to also think about what challenges you will face in pursuing your goal and what solutions do you have for your 2017 goals challenges. I reiterated on some things about those solutions and challenges several times. You know why I did that? Because I know you're going to have some challenges. I want to share with you something here that's called SMART goals. You probably heard of SMART goals. It's not on the handout. Um, there's when you're developing your goals, I want you to keep the SMART acronym in mind. Your goals must be specific. They must be measurable. They must be achievable. They must be relevant, and they must be timely. Now I'm going to give you some things that you can write that can help you with that SMART. Okay, acronym for specific. You want to write down what exactly you want to accomplish. You know, you don't want to just accomplish making $100,000 this year. It's something that really drives you. If money is what's driving you, if you make the money, you won't be happy at the end. That could be a driving force of your independence, a driving force to fund your children's education. I don't know what it is. You have to determine why you want these goals. Next is measurable. How would you know when you have reached these goals? See, you can get to the top of Success Mountain and not be happy because you didn't really reach the ultimate goal was to have financial freedom. You're working hard, but you're in more debt just to make the 200000 you made, so you're still where you started from. How will you know when you reach those goals? That's measurable. Next, the A is achievable. Is achieving this goal realistic with effort and commitment? Can you achieve this goal really? You want to make achievable goal. Don't say, oh, I'm going to do 100 deals next year and you only did 10 deals last year. That's not achievable. And you want to make your goals relevant. Why is this goal significant, significant in your life? Why is it? Why is it? For me personally in my life, I was raised in, in a poor environment, um, being raised by a single parent. It was significant for me to say, I've accomplished something. 
I've arrived. I was labeled in school that I didn't have the ability to articulate like everyone else. I had a learning disability. Then they find out that wasn't true. Yeah. So I had, I, I had a goal to prove in life that I could be successful. And that was my goal. Not for anyone else. It was my personal goal. And that drove me. And then my friends who I, I, I began to meet who was doctors and lawyers, they wasn't happy. And you know what? I found something that I could do that I was happy and I could make just as much as money as they could make. I was on fire, man. I tell you, it was exciting. And next, um, the acronym, the, the T for the SMART goal is timely. When will you achieve this goal? My friends, it's up to you. All I can do is give you the information to help you make it to the top. You've heard people say the cliche, I can lead you to the water, I can't make you drink. we will love to help you. Um, if you would like to have the SMART Goals Worksheet, you can feel free to contact um, Sheena at su support at agicorporate.com and she'll be able to send you this, the SMART Goal Worksheet. I'll send her a copy of it and she can forward it to you so you can begin to articulate your goals and paper and bring it together. That's it. That's support at agicorporate.com. That's just support at agicorporate.com. As well as I'd like to share with you, just for you tuning in today, I will be hosting a 2017 group coaching session for goals accountability. Those leads and contacts goals that you're setting up, I will be able to host that starting in February, goals and accountability workshop. Just by you tuning in today, you will be able to come on to this program at least for 90 days at no cost to you. That's right. I want to get you started on the right track. If you're interested in the 2017 group coach session on goals and accountability, you can contact us again at support at agicorporate.com. Support at agicorporate.com. I really, I'm just excited. Thank you for taking the time to tune in today. I'll turn this, everything back over to Sheena at this time. It's been an awesome, awesome time I spent with you today, and I hope the information can help you. May the rose rise to meet you, and I look forward to seeing you at the top. And thank you everyone so much for joining us today and a huge thank you to Tracy Brown for hosting this month's webinar and giving a great presentation once again. Have a great day everyone and we hope to see you next time.